Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I can tell with all the excitement uh, today, it's this is going to be a very special day. It's not that often in the history of the Wilmer Institute we celebrate two professorships supported by one generous individual like we are uh, today. And uh, so it's, a, it's a, a great event in the history of the Wilmer Institute, and uh, we're able to celebrate uh, two uh, remarkable individuals who met each other about a quarter century ago, uh, Dan Finkelstein and Andreas Strakopoulos. They were introduced uh, to each other by another remarkable individual, Walter Stark. And uh, over the next uh, 25 years, uh, Andreas and Dan uh, developed a, a mutual admiration and respect uh, that grew, and Dan introduced Andreas around the university, and now Andreas has, uh, I haven't checked with the business office, but I'm pretty sure he's endowed half of the university, <laughs> <coughs> the half that Michael Bloomberg didn't endow. And, uh, and so uh, it's a very special uh, event for all of us, and so we're thrilled to have all of you here uh, with us to help us uh, celebrate this. I'd like to welcome Dr. Landon King, the Executive Vice Dean of our medical school, uh, Mr. Fritz Schroeder, the Senior Vice President for Development and Alumni Relations, uh, Jeffrey Kahn, the Director of the, Andre uh, the Andreas Strakopoulos Tr Director of the uh, Berman Institute of Bioethics, uh, Dr. Hari Han, the Inaugural Director of the uh, Stavros Niakos Foundation Agora Institute. We have members of the Wilmer Board of Governors with us here today, Dr. Jensen and Dr. Goldberg and Mrs. Myrna Goldberg with us. Uh, we have a number of uh, special speakers that you'll be hearing from. Andreas Strakopoulos, Carla Finkelstein, Michael Repka, and uh, Dr. Jim Handa. It's uh, also a pleasure to welcome, especially Dr. Jefferson Doyle and Mandeep Singh, who are the uh, two recipients of this special professorship, and we welcome their friends and families and loved ones that are with us uh, today. So it's uh, my pleasure at this point to welcome Dr. Landon King to the podium. Landon. Well, thank you very much, Peter. And uh, good afternoon to all of you. What an extraordinary day. What a truly extraordinary day. We're pleased and grateful to be joined today by so many faculty, friends, department leaders, donors, and other important members of the Johns Hopkins Medicine and Wilmer Eye Institute communities. Thank you all for being here. On behalf of the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, I'm honored to help celebrate the dedication of the Andrea C. Dercopoulos and Daniel Finkelstein, MD, Rising Professorship in Ophthalmology, for the inaugural recipient, Dr. Jefferson Doyle, and the reinstallation of the Andreas C. Dracopoulos Professorship in Ophthalmology for recipient, Dr. Mandeep Singh. Today is unique, I think, even in the history of Wilmer, where we have such an incredible record, and you have such an incredible record of inspiring people to invest in you and in the programs, that we're both establishing a newly uh, created rising professorship, as well as reinstalling a traditional professorship <clears throat> that had been previously held by Dr. Daniel Finkelstein. Whether professorships are termed as traditional or rising, all endowed professorships allow for both creativity and stability, enabling a great academic medical center like Johns Hopkins to sustain its forward progress. The generosity of supporters of the Wilmer Eye Institute paired with the caliber of its faculty, and I would say trainees and staff, allows Wilmer to serve as a model for other departments of ophthalmology around the world. The Dracopoulos Finkelstein Rising Professorship is a unique career-changing opportunity for its inaugural recipient, Dr. Jefferson Doyle. Equivalent to Wilmer's traditional professorships for senior faculty members, Rising professorships equip our young investigators with extraordinary resources at the beginning of their careers, which can enhance and accelerate the productivity of our early career researchers, whose work will no doubt benefit patients today and far into the future. 
Today we celebrate and honor Dr. Doyle for his many achievements. Additionally, I would like to recognize Dr. Mandeep Singh, who will be reinstalled as the new Andrea C. Dracopoulos Professor. This professorship was formally accepted by Johns Hopkins University on April 20, 2017, with Dr. Dan Finkelstein as the inaugural recipient. And I want to say hello to his family. He was an extraordinary individual. Dr. Finkelstein was not only a compassionate clinician, but he was a giant in the field of medical ethics, and his work continues to influence many around the world. It is my understanding that Dr. Singh is the exemplary clinician scientist to represent and extend Dr. Finkelstein's legacy as the new holder of the Andrea C. Dracopoulos Professorship. It's my honor to recognize and celebrate Dr. Singh for his many accomplishments as well. When you assemble the smartest and most dedicated scientists in the world and give them the resources they need, they can indeed change the world. Private gifts allow us to retain the top minds in the field and give them the freedom to direct more time and effort to critical projects and innovative ideas. With these professorships, I have no doubt that Drs. Doyle and Singh will achieve groundbreaking new discoveries to address some of the world's most challenging genetic eye, genetic eye diseases. And to Mr. Andreas Dracopoulos, whose generosity has made today possible, thank you. We just can't thank you enough for what you have contributed. We are deeply grateful for your support and commitment to Wilmer and the university. Because we formally dedicate the, dedicated the Dracopoulos Professorship in 2017, our uh, task here today is to formally dedicate the Dracopoulos Finkelstein Rising Professorship. I would like to invite Fritz Schrader, Senior Vice President of Development and Alumni Relations for Johns Hopkins University to the podium. Because the endowment for a professorship is held and administered by the university trustees, professorships are formally presented to the university. So on behalf of Johns Hopkins Medicine, I formally present to you Fritz Schrader, the Andreas C. Dracopoulos, and Daniel Finkelstein, MD Rising Professorship in the Department of Ophthalmology. Congratulations. I'll put it back. Thank you, Dr. King. On behalf of Johns Hopkins University, President Ron Daniels, and the University's Board of Trustees, it is my great pleasure to formally accept the Andreas C. Dracopoulos and Daniel Finkelstein, MD, rising professorship. Andreas, we are deeply grateful, as Landon said, for all that you do for Johns Hopkins, both personally and through the Stavros Niarchos Foundation. And as a Johns Hopkins University trustee, a member of the advisory board for the Berman Institute, as a humanitarian, as a philanthropist, as an advocate for medical ethics, uh, a long-standing supporter of the Wilmer Eye Institute, and quite simply, as a dear friend to so many of us gathered here. I am immensely proud to recognize the formal establishment and dedication of the Andreas C. Dracopoulos and Daniel Finkelstein, MD, rising professorship in ophthalmology. And I have to say, as someone who watched firsthand the friendship and the admiration that you had for Dan and that developed between the two of you. It is a particular honor to be a part of this moment. Thank you for your incredible generosity and your support of this very special rising professorship. You have provided a platform that honors Dr. Finkelstein's legacy in perpetuity and allows for the continuation of providing the highest standard of medical care to patients at Wilmer and beyond. The men and, women, men and women at Wilmer who hold rising professorships conduct some of the most significant and high impact research and bring considerable prestige to Johns Hopkins name through their collaborative multidisciplinary work. Their work makes this a great university and their ability to chart new courses of research and patient care comes in no small part from the reliable support an endowment provides to them. Endowments are truly the foundation on which our success is built as an institution. On behalf of the university, congratulations on this fantastic achievement, Dr. Doyle, 
Thank you for your contributions to medical research and to patient care at Wilmer and for the work that we know you will continue to do long into the future. Additionally, although the Andreas C. Dracopoulos Professorship has been established and accepted into the university back in 2017, I'd also like to congratulate Dr. Mandeep Singh on his installation into the Andreas C. Dracopoulos Professorship. Thank you for your contributions and for your continued excellence. At this time, I invite Dr. McDonnell to come back to the podium. Thank you, Fritz. It's an understatement to say that the Wilmer Institute is thrilled to have this uh, professorship created here at the Wilmer Institute. Um, I can't uh, refrain from saying a few words about um, Dan Finkelstein. I knew him when I was a medical student, and he was a big shot professor. And then I was a resident, he was a big shot professor. Then I uh, became another academic, I guess, faculty colleague. And then I became his boss. And you really know somebody when you're at the bottom of the totem pole, so to speak, you're the medical student, and how they uh, relate to you, how they treat you. And, and he treated us medical students and residents like we were his colleagues. And uh, it, it was, uh, you know, he's an exemplary uh, person. My um, uh, impression of him when I was a resident was he was one of the few people willing to see people with this inherited retinal disease, retinitis pigmentosa. There wasn't anything that could be done to help those people. There were no treatments, there was no gene therapy, no uh, CRISPR technology, no whatever. And I think uh, many of us ophthalmologists, I know I fall prey to this, we like to be heroes and somebody can't see, we like to operate on them. And then the next day, we take the patch off. They can see, they hug us, they tell us how grateful they are. And we can pretend to be humble and say, oh, it's nothing. But, um, <laughs> but uh, for those people, there was nothing, uh, no treatment. And I felt that uh, my observation was nobody wanted anything to do with them. But, but that wasn't Dan. He um, took care of those patients at Wilmer. He would follow them. He uh, did learn things. He learned that they often progressed at different rates, and based on that, he could give individual guidance to people as to what they might expect in, in their future going forward, when they might have issues where they needed additional help. But I, I had the definite impression that heavily it was he wanted them to know he cared and that they weren't abandoned. Uh, and even if there wasn't today a cure, uh, pe there are people thinking about it, trying to develop uh, treatments, and one day uh, they would do that. So my, my staff said, be sure and mention that he, he wouldn't see patients in a regular exam room. In his room, there was a couch with pillows. Now, and, and it's true. And when, when was the last time you were in a doctor's exam room? And they said, have a seat on the couch with those pillows and tell me about yourself and uh, whatever. That was uh, Dan, he, uh, he, he drove home the point, you know, that uh, this is not a pair of eyes in our exam room that needs something done to them, it's a person. And, uh, and he, uh, he drove it home and drove it home, but he, he lived it and exemplified it. And, uh, and I, I, I hope very much that that uh, will live on. And the uh, emphasis he put on always doing the right thing. Uh, that that, that uh, baton has been passed to the next generation at Wilmer, and Wilmer will continue uh, to be at the uh, forefront uh, in, this, uh, in this area. So um, he was a, a unique a guy, uh, absolutely no, no question about it. He was a special, and every department is grateful to, uh, should be grateful to have uh, someone uh, like Dan to keep us on the right track. Now, he wasn't all uh, uh, squishy. He, he really knew science. He was the PI on the uh, NEI-funded multicenter trial for branch retinal vein occlusion and figured out what's the best treatment. Back then, it was pretty much laser uh, for those individuals. He was chairman of the data and safety monitoring board for the silicone oil vitrectomy study that the ophthalmologists in this room will know about. Steve Ryan, 
was the PI, and he chose Dan Finkelstein to, uh, for that role because he had such high regard for Dan. And Dan would, you know, if you ask him a question about what about patient, he would, he would be able to quote out of the paper that described the clinical trial results for that uh, condition what the right thing to do was. So he wasn't just a be a nice guy and show you like patients. He, he un completely knew the scientific underpinnings of his uh, work. In the skit, we would make fun of him because one of the things he would say sometimes is, well, we don't know. We just don't know. We may never know. <laughs> because, you know, maybe there wouldn't be a trial on that. So that became the thing that us uh, disrespectful residents would, would have uh, for him in the skit. But he, he was always about um, you know, doing the right thing for patients, not letting any patients feel abandoned. And, uh, and no faculty here in the room, you're not going to get couches uh, and pillows in your exam rooms. You'll just have to do the standard, uh, the standard thing. But um, you know, we all uh, miss him. Wilmer's a family, but uh, we're thrilled that also uh, uh, Dan has uh, a big following, and we're going to hear from uh, his daughter in, in a little while. But um, I, I think probably the greatest uh, tribute to a physician is uh, that a, uh, a friend would uh, create a, such a professorship so that uh, Dan's name will live forever at, uh, at Wilmer. And we have this uh, wall behind me, professorship wall, that has the Andreas C. Dracopoulos professorship plaque on it. But we ran out of room there. And when there were only two spots left, I asked the, development, the facilities and development people, I said, we need a new professorship wall. And it took a little while because of supply chain and whatever. And by the time we uh, got the wall up, which was on Friday of last week, uh, there were there had been 14 additional professorships funded at the Wilmer Institute, filling up the last two spots there and 12 there. So we'll now, uh, when we do the unveiling, we'll be unveiling two different uh, places. But Dan's name will uh, will live forever, along with his friend Andreas's name here at uh, Wilmer and these young. Uh, uh, eager Beaver, genius uh, young faculty who do great things for uh, decades, years and decades and centuries to come to reflect uh, well on these two gentlemen that made uh, today possible. So it's now my uh, pleasure to welcome to the podium uh, Mr. Andreas Trakopoulos uh, to say a few words. While he's coming up, I hope you'll admire this lovely chair which we'll be sending to Mr. Dracopoulos to remind him of this <laughs> special event. And uh, he will treasure it always as the <laughs> most expensive piece of furniture uh, in, his, uh, in, his, in his home. So uh, on Andreas, please accept this small token of our appreciation. But it is small compared to the sense of appreciation that we have in our hearts for you for doing this. Thank you. Even though I'm a, I'm a patient of Wilmer's, still need my glasses. <laughs> maybe, maybe one day. <laughs> so distinguished friends, I'm truly honored and happy to be here with you all today. The Wilmer Eye Institute will always be special to me, as among other reasons, it is the one responsible for the beginning of my long relationship with Hopkins at large over the last ap approximately 30 years and counting. Wilmer itself will soon be celebrating its 100 years birthday in 2025, celebrating a century of world-renowned leadership in research, education of vision specialists and scientists, exceptional patient care, and a record of clinical and scientific uh, achievements. It is my honor to be associated with John Hopkins, and as is the case with the Berman Bioethics Institute, I'm also especially proud for my name to be linked with Wilmer Institute and especially with such esteemed professorships as the ones we are celebrating this evening. We should never forget where we come from 
and in terms of this relationship, I have many people to thank, starting with my late grandmother, Mary Dracopoulos, who opened the door for many other family members to come to Hopkins for their care. When she first came here, she had to wait around, around the block, when she was in her 80s, to meet the famous Dr. Stark. Dr. Walsh, who I think is here this evening, or was supposed to be here, Dr. Walter Stark, Dr. William Slot, who all took great, great care of my father, and then referred by Dr. Stark. A quarter of, of a century ago, I met with the late Dr. Dan Finkelstein, who sadly passed away in the spring of 2022 and continues to be greatly missed, who treated me for my eyes, and the rest is history. But before I continue, just to say how honored and happy I am to have met this evening's Dan's sister, Jean, Dan's daughter, Carla, and grandson, Josh, and his son, James. It was thanks to, to Dan that I got connected with Dr. Ruth Faden. I'm sorry she couldn't make it here this evening, la last minute, but very happy to see and be with Dr. Jeff Kahn and Orly, and the amazing work of the Berman Institute of Bioethics, and got even closer with Wilmer. And then Dr. Peter McDonald, whose leadership, vision, and care for everyone connected to Wilmer has contributed to Wilmer remaining the top place in the country, if not the world, to treat all and any eye medical issue. And finally, thank you to the unique Fritz Schroeder, who manages to always make it happen for all parties involved. Back in 2017, we were gathered in this same building to celebrate the inaugural recipient of the professorship, Dan Finkelstein. I believe Dan will be in incredibly happy to be celebrating with us today his successor recipient, Dr. Mandeep Singh. Dr. Singh co-founder together with Dr. Doyle of the Genetic Eye Disease Center, follows the big footsteps of Dr. Finkelstein in the best possible way, both in terms of the science and the medical care, combined with pioneering re research and cutting edge therapies, but also in terms of treating patients as human beings. As Dr. Singh has said regarding his first meetings and discussions with Dr. Finkelstein, and I quote, he didn't talk about training or technique, but, I, but about human dignity, morality, and ethics. Dan Finkelstein understood how the manner of his care affected a patient's whole life, end of quote. And what a way to celebrate together with the inaugural recipient of the Daniel Finkelstein Rising Professorship, Dr. James Doyle. When Dr. McDonald spoke to me about establishing these rising professorships, I thought it to be a great idea and a win-win for all involved and in all aspects. So sincere congratulations to both Dr. Singh and Dr. Doyle, two doctors who, who com complement one another and together they could not be doing a better job in paying tribute to the legacy of Dan. Thank you. My personal and our, our foundation's relationship with John Hopkins at large continues as strong as ever, and both I and the Star Wars Nyakos Foundation are proud to be involved in supporting all the magnificent work being done here at Hopkins under the leadership of my very good friend, Ron Daniels. We live in times that are truly complicated. At times, it seems that every aspect of our lives has been infected with extreme polarization. Dan Finkelstein spent his whole life focusing on what we should be doing to protect and celebrate our own humanity, to embrace our own humanity. And life today seems to be going the opposite way, and one wonders whether we are equipped as a whole to deal with the very important and complex issues that face us all, like that of climate change, AI, etc. And in doing so, we do have a common denominator to stand upon, and this is none other than embracing our own humanity. And in many ways, our Hopkins SNF's Agora mission, and Harry, I don't know if Harry is here. No. And Harry, thank you for being here. I thought she's going to be here. I did not forget you before. In promoting civic engagement and civil discourse is not far off from Dan Finkelstein's life mission. We have foremost to remain human. So as I like to often say, even during bad days, it's all good. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. Uh, Wilmer is a family, and, but we're happy to have uh, uh, Dan's daughter, Carla, Dr. Carla Finkelstein, with us today uh, to um, 
speak on behalf of her uh, family and, and her dad. Carla. On behalf of my family, Dan's sister Jean and her husband Gary, my brother James, and my son Josh, we offer gratitude for being included in this ceremony today. What an honor to have an endowed chair in Dan's name to carry forth his legacy as a physician and a caregiver. Thank you so much to Andreas for your generous gift. As much as my family and I are honored, I have wondered what my dad would think about having a chair named in part for him. I think he would say it's wonderful that another ophthalmologist will get financial and institutional support for their work, but I also think he might say, eh, it shouldn't be in my name. He never wanted much fuss to be made about him. So without him here in person with us to object, I'm going to spend a few minutes making a fuss about Dan Finkelstein. Most of you here knew him professionally as a colleague or a mentor. I think the qualities that I've heard many of you describe um, when I think about him as a father, they're actually largely the same. Reliable, dedicated, consistent, selfless, I thought about the metaphor um, that we often hear about getting onto an airplane and we're told, you know, always put the mask on yourself before you put it on your loved ones. And when I thought about my dad and how he often took care of others, I did think though, the metaphor might be a little different for him. I don't think that he would put the mask on himself first but I also don't think that he would have put it on his children first. I think like the good surgeon that he was, he would have figured out a way to put on his own with one hand and simultaneously put it on those around him. We also know that my dad was um, particular and demanding. He didn't shy away from those characteristics and I wanted to share two very quick stories from the family that illustrate that. Um, in the mid-1980s, uh, it was time for me to graduate from high school, and my mom was checking in with my dad to make sure that he had cleared his schedule and he knew when the graduation ceremony was. And he looked at her like she was crazy and said, high school graduation? Why would I go to that? We knew she was gonna graduate. So that, in, a, in part, is the demanding piece. Why would we celebrate something that everyone should do? We need to raise to a higher level to be celebrated. Um, so, so in that spirit, I also remember when my brother James um, was doing graduate work in psychology and had his first uh, journal article published, my dad did something that many of you in this room will not be surprised to hear. He snapped a photo of the abstract of that paper and immediately had it memorialized on a mug. <laughs> Many of you have received similar mugs, hot plates, uh, I don't even know what other tote bags. <laughs> uh, when Dan felt something warranted celebrating, he would celebrate with style. You, um, those of you who uh, went to some of his ethics lunches, may or may not know that he had to have just the right sandwiches, just the right flower arrangements. It didn't matter how many people were going to show up, but it was going to look ready for the careful thought that was going to happen. Many of you know that over the past three decades, Dan became quite interested in medical ethics, which also led him to Catholicism and a degree in theology. He never really did do anything half-heartedly, did he? Uh, this led him to become a staunch proponent of getting to know his patients as whole people, which, no coincidence, is the blooming of the friendship between Dan and Andreas. My dad's research into spirituality and medical care was an extension of this commitment to listening and empathy as a key to supporting patients' healing. He also developed a strong sense of empathy and justice in terms of ensuring high-quality care for those who might not otherwise have been able to access or afford it. Some of you may know about Dan's volunteer work at a Catholic medical clinic in Washington, D.C. 
you may or may not know that he also made it possible for many of those patients to receive treatment here at Wilmer free of charge. He even had the foresight to have a brochure with detailed directions to his office printed in Spanish. Recently, Dan was grateful that his status as a st senior physician gave him the latitude to continue to spend unhurried amounts of time with his patients. He was troubled by the turn in healthcare towards maximizing profits by rushing care. I have no doubt that Dan's hope for his legacy would be that those holding these two chairs continue their groundbreaking work in maximizing vision, but just as importantly, toward listening to and advocating for the full humanity of those you care for. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Uh, thanks, Dr. Finkelstein, for those remarks. Uh, so I'm Michael Repka, Division Director of Pediatric Ophthalmology, and I would like to thank um, everyone for attending as well. I'd also like to specially call out the Knights Templar Eye Foundation, Maryland leadership for their unwavering support in joining us today. Uh, Dr. McDonald for championing this whole concept of rising professorships, uh, the remarkable generosity of Mr. Andreas Dracopoulos, uh, the Board of Trustees, and leadership of the School of Medicine and the University, and lastly, the Finkelstein family for uh, their uh, time, effort, and having Dan as a colleague for many years. So now to introduce the first recipient, uh, Dr. Jeff Doyle. Uh, Dr. Doyle has had a somewhat uh, transatlantic uh, exposure uh, to um, medicine and ophthalmology. His undergraduate degree a Bachelor of Arts in Physiological Sciences, was at the Worcester College at Oxford University um, a long time ago, Jeff. Um, then he came uh, west and came to the School of Public Health here at Johns Hopkins, uh, where he received a Master's in Health Science uh, from the now Bloomberg School of Public Health, uh, then back to the UK uh, for his MBB Curological or whatever the degree is, the MBB CHIR. Um, but I've never asked, and I've failed to, is then why did you go to Cambridge? That seems like you would never do Oxford and Cambridge in the same career. Um, but it's little I know about England, I think. Um, so after completing that um, uh, medical degree, uh, he came back to North America, once again to Baltimore, this time for a PhD in cellular and molecular medicine and some postdoctoral research fellowships and time went on. Um, in addition, he picked up an internship, or a first year, if you will, in internal medicine and general surgery at the North Central Thames Foundation School, University College London, then finally back to Baltimore, and in 2014 joined the Wilmer Residency. Uh, in 2017, a pediatric ophthalmology fellowship at the Boston Children's Hospital, uh, where he brought back important ideas to question our own faculty. Um, then, for want of anything else to do, he became the assistant chief of service, so the chief resident who runs our residency program uh, in 2018 and 19, and finally, in 2019, joined the faculty um, of the Wilmer Institute as a attending physician. Um, he's had research support from the National Eye Institute, uh, now has a KOA award, uh, the Knights Templar Eye Foundation, the National Marfan Foundation uh, with the Victor McCusick Fellowship and Career Development Awards, uh, the Conquering Gyrate Atrophy Foundation, and Wilmer Eye Institute funds through the generosity of Dr. McDonald and others. While developing his laboratory, uh, Jeff has been active clinically in pediatric eye care, looking particularly at cataract lens abnormalities and infantile and juvenile glaucoma. Uh, he continues to be active in educating our residents, fellows, and medical students. And lastly, uh, along with Mandeep Singh, got us back into the business of doing quality electroretinography, an important but side uh, channel, if you will, of ophthalmology, important in 
some retinal inherited disorders. Um, and this return, if I can say, uh, to ocular genetics research and care, for which Wilmer has had a long and pioneering in history with Dr. Morton Goldberg and Dr. Irene Mominy. Um, although CVs are fluid, uh, his, he has at least 17 peer-reviewed publications at this stage of his career, at least 10 additional book chapters and reviews. Uh, certainly this has been a fantastic career launch in a really short time. Um, the rising professorship being bestowed today should serve as the afterburner, if I will, Jeff, to prevent that stall out in early career and move your clinician scientist career to the next level. So congratulations to you, uh, to your wife, Dr. Nina Nami, who joined us today, although the children have gone that way, I guess. But congratulations, Jeff. Uh, Michael, thank you. Um, uh, you know, a lot, many of you may not know that uh, it's thought maybe by 2030 there'll be one billion people in the world with high myopia. That, that, that's a number one probably public health issue right now, and it's genetic, much more common in Asian populations than in European and African, and, um, and it's one of the great mysteries, and, and Jeff is also doing uh, very exciting work in that area. So, uh, Jeff, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome you uh, to the uh, pantheon of uh, people who receive uh, these professorships, and uh, we know you'll accomplish uh, great things with it. So uh, I offer to you, if you'll come on up here, I'll offer you this um, beautiful medallion, uh, symbol of the uh, celebration, your installation, as the inaugural recipient of the Andreas C. Dracopoulos and Daniel Finkelstein, MD, rising professor of ophthalmology at Wilmer. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. It is my absolute pleasure to be standing here today for this dedication. I first became acquainted with Wilma 20 years ago this year when I came for an international elective as a, a visiting medical student from the UK. I still recall almost every interaction I had, from my initial meeting with Neil Miller to my time in clinic and the OR with Mort Goldberg, Jim Hander, Peter Gelbach, and the ACS at the time, Bert Jun. I was blown away by the quality, intelligence, and professionalism of all the people I met. It seemed apparent to me back then that if you were serious about becoming a leader in the field of ophthalmology, whether research, clinical, or both, then Wilma was the place to be. My view hasn't changed in the past 20 years. For anyone that may not know, professorships are typically dedicated to senior faculty who have spent years, if not decades, making seminal contributions to their field. The dedication of a rising professorship is clearly different. These have been created to propel the recipient to reach this goal, rather than to honor them for having achieved it. When I interviewed with the CMM training program here at Hopkins for my PhD, the head of admissions at that time, Kurt Sivins, said to me something I have never forgotten and tried to aspire to ever since. He said, we are not interested in incremental progress in science here at Hopkins. We are interested in recruiting people who will create paradigm shifts in their field and fundamentally change how we think about and treat a disease. Can you do that? When Jonathan and Peter first told me about the rising professorships, this is exactly what I thought of. There are paradigm shift in our thinking about why to create a professorship whom to give it to, and what to expect from it. It is so typical of Hopkins and Wilmer to be the first to devise and deliver on this concept. So why are they so important? They provide substantial funds to use in an unrestricted manner, within reason of course, at the start of your career when you need it the most. It is so challenging to get a research career off the ground and build the infrastructure around you you need to succeed. I can say from my personal experience that the rising professorship has already had a huge impact 
on uh, my lab and my career. It has allowed me to start to build a team of outstanding individuals that I could not have hoped to develop for another decade or more through traditional means. It has allowed us to increase the scope of the work we can take on, including bold, ambitious projects, which I believe hold huge potential to significantly advance the field, and it has accelerated the rate at which we can complete them. However, a great concept is nothing without those who buy into the vision, excuse the pun, and help make it happen. In this case, I owe a huge debt of gratitude to Andreas Dracopoulos for providing the funds to make this rising professorship a reality. When you read about the formidable scale and scope of the projects he has supported, you soon realize why he is considered such a visionary global philanthropist. Despite this, he is in so credibly humble and understated, it has been an absolute pleasure getting to know you, Andreas. Thank you most sincerely for supporting this rising professorship. I will do everything possible to live up to your expectations as its inaugural recipient. The other half of the rising professorship is, of course, the legacy of Dr. Dan Finkelstein. In all our interactions when I was a resident, Dan was always such a thoughtful, sincere, knowledgeable, and kind physician who focused on the whole person, not just their disease. For someone like myself in the field of pediatric ophthalmology and genetics, this perspective could not be more relevant. Holding a rising professorship in his name serves as a constant reminder to hold oneself to the highest ethical standards in the research we conduct, the care we deliver, and the mentorship that we provide to those in our charge. So what do we hope to achieve with this rising professorship? Pretty simple to maximally impact the lives of as many children and their families as we can. There are so many reasons why I chose to become a pediatric ophthalmologist. One of them was because of the severe shortage there is in the US and abroad, and with even fewer having an interest in translational scientific research. To me, I cannot think of anything more rewarding than to alter the trajectory of a child's disease and even their life from the care we provide. From a scientific perspective, there are such huge opportunities for fundamental scientific discovery in the field that are so important, yet just not being studied. We get to ask simple yet critical big picture questions about early disease development. We try to understand and intervene in disease processes before they have caused irreparable damage. Nowhere is this more so than with the genetic disorders that affect the eye, my area of interest. Our collaborations with Hal Dietz on connective tissue disorders, Dave Valley on gyrate atrophy, and Shira Ziegler on PXE are just three great examples. When Peter asked me to establish a genetic eye center at Wilma with my now co-director Mandeep Singh, I jumped at the opportunity. As we developed the concept, the opportunity for synergy became clear. I did pediatrics, Mandeep did adult retina so we could offer optimal care for patients and family members of all ages. We have both translational research labs with different foci. Mine focuses on early disease etiology and interventions such as gene therapy. Mandeep's focuses on therapies to replace cells in the eye that have been lost at a later stage. We named it the Wilma Jedi Center, short for genetic eye disease. Spelled differently, but pronounced just like Star Wars, to make it easy for everyone to remember. We modeled its goals on the tripartite mission of Hopkins to advance clinical care, research, and education into genetic eye disorders. Our goal is to make Wilma a global leader in the field again, not only in the areas that we study, but in collaboration with others to advance the care of patients with all forms of genetic eye disorders, something of which I hope Dan would be proud. In addition to the names I've already mentioned, I would like to finish with a few essential thank yous to the countless mentors here at Wilma and elsewhere who have guided me, uh, including Don Zak, Michelle Pardieu, and in particular, Hal Dietz, my PhD mentor and second father. Thank you to all the members of my lab who were bold enough to join the lab of a junior faculty, when, mon when many probably would not. I hope it is a decision that will pay off dividends in the future. To all my collaborators for your tireless assistance, to all members of the Genetic Eye Center here at Wilma, 
to the funding organizations that have supported our work so far. As Michael mentioned, the Knights, the Marfan Foundation, Conquering Gyrate Atrophy, Brad and Becky Stern, more recently, and the National Eye Institute. To my parents, Mike and Teresa, thank you for always pushing Alex and I to be bold. And lastly, thank you to my wonderful wife, Nina, who is a saint to put up with me and is such an incredible mother to our two young daughters, Delaney and Darcy, who I think were uh, giving their speech a few moments ago. <laughs> and lastly, thank you to all you for your attention. Thank you, and uh, Dr. Doyle, my heartfelt congratulations. I think, um, thinking back to the 20 years ago when you rotated with me in the clinic in the OR, I guess my only failing is that, and despite you giving a very uh, informative and important justification for going into pediatric ophthalmology, I think my failure was not to convince you to go into retina. <laughs> um, and by the way, I am Jim Hand. I have the honor of being the uh, chief of the retina division. I say honor because I'm humbled by the talent that's uh, assembled uh, in, uh, in our division, uh, and uh, I learn from each of my colleagues every day. Um, one of those is um, Mandeep Singh, uh, and I have the distinct pleasure and honor to uh, move on for the reinstallation of the Andreas Dracopoulos Professorship in Ophthalmology, um, the new recipient. So Wilmer, and Hopkins uh, certainly strive to have the best and the brightest, as you've heard today, of their faculty. And we strive to recruit the triple threat, those who choose to be outstanding clinician, outstanding researchers, and outstanding educators slash mentors. Inherited retinal dystrophies, as, as we've heard, are, are rare, inherited, uh, inevitably blinding diseases that can be difficult to diagnose because over 300 genetic mutations have been identified that cause this disease, which cause different phenotypes or appearances, which can cause plenty of confusion. We're so fortunate that uh, Wilmer was able to recruit uh, Dr. Mandeep Singh in 2015 following not a national, but an international search for the best IRD expert. And he has not disappointed. So what separates Mandeep from the pack? Well, he's truly an exceptional clinician and surgeon and if you ever uh, attend any of our conferences, when uh, Mandeep speaks, everybody gets a little bit quieter. And it reminds me of the, um, the old ad, the uh, E.F. Hutton ads, where there's commotion, and then E.F. Hutton sort of whispers about his financial advice, and everybody stops talking, and they lean their ear in. I think that sort of typifies uh, when, uh, when Mandeep chooses to speak at our conferences. And uh, experts in IRDs don't grow on trees, and uh, again, he's genuinely considered an international expert. But what also separates him is he's one of the only a handful of clinician scientists who actively see patients but are NIH funded, and in fact, he has uh, an R01 um, uh, to do translational neuroscience. And when he came to me to discuss his project, I was pretty much blown away. So he's interested in transplantation to sort of dovetail with his love and interest in vitreoretinal surgery. And all of the transplant, our transplants have been to transplant the retinal pigment epithelium in uh, age-related macular degeneration. The problem with that single cell type of approach is that the overlying photoreceptors, which are the light detecting cells, are dead. So if we replace the cells, the dead cells won't come back, vision won't improve. So he came up with the clever idea uh, of not only implanting these RPE cells, which keep the photoreceptors healthy, but also to simultaneously transplant cone photoreceptors, the photoreceptors that enable us to have 20-20 vision. It's a huge, monstrous task. He's developed an amazing model and program, uh, and he's also uh, recruited some of the, the best scientists to help him accomplish this program. And uh, it's, really, it's really been wonderful to, to watch this uh, problem unfold. In addition, he also uh, is the PI for a number of clinical trials in inherited retinal dystrophies, which means that he heads up the clinical side to complement the translational research side. 
to complement his surgical practice and clinical practice of unique and distinct inherited retinal dystrophies. And oh, by the way, he also loves to be an educator and a mentor. And if you see some of the comments that his ex-mentor or his ex-mentees and students who have uh, rotated through have said about him, amazing. I don't think I've ever gotten those comments, and I'm jealous. <laughs> um, on top of that, you heard about the Jedi to have an inherited uh, retinal dystrophy sort of unified for ocular diseases uh, in Wilmer. And um, uh, both uh, with, with Jeff and Mandeep, they've really um, had the vision to create this program as assistant professors, which sort of embarrasses a lot of us professors that we didn't think of it and have the guts to do it. But these guys have really unfolded something wonderful, integrated, and it's also brought in clinical trials. It's put Wilmer on the map. Um, so I really, I really uh, um, um, uh, appreciate and, and applaud what you've done. Um, but I think what makes him special for the Dr Dracopolis professorship is his high, high degree in interest and competence in bioethics. And that's just not, not just saying that uh, uh, lightly. He, in medical school, um, chose to uh, take a, a course in medical law and ethics. And I think some of that background, his fundamental personality and, and ethical fiber, um, helped him develop this really nice friendship with Dan. And I think their friendship really helped to blossom some of his uh, interest in, uh, in, in medical ethics. Um, and to give you an example of that, he was, uh, uh, he conducted a review uh, of the processes and guidelines of the NIH uh, ethics program with the NIH ethics program um, uh, coordinator, Trevor uh, Peterson. And this review will serve as a, uh, as a guide for Johns Hopkins and Wilmer and other institutions to guarantee transparency and appropriate ethical conduct in collaborative projects with the NIH that involve stem cells and regenerative medicine. And I feel good that Mandeep is uh, at the lead here. So um, patients with IRDs and their families have unique bioethical considerations due to the potential for passing the condition on to offspring. And with novel treatments emerging that, that may reverse or cure some of these conditions, it's also a source of uh, intense research but that includes both stem cells and CRISPR editing technologies. These new advances introduce new ethical concerns that must be reconciled. And I believe that Mandeep's general interest in bioethics uh, will, was strengthened through his many discussions with Dan, but will also help um, guide the field to make the right decision because um, we can't let our, um, our uh, enthusiasm, our ethic, uh, ethics get in the way of the enthusiasm. So I think he's going to provide a nice uh, guiding light. So um, I, I think also uh, you can understand really what a, what a wonderfully nice person he is, and that immediately hits patients when they first meet him. Um, and, and I think you're going you're gonna to feel that when he comes up and gives his remarks. Um, Mandeep is really one of the nicest people I know in the world. Uh, again, you will feel his warmth and humanity from his first words. And uh, I'm really proud to say that um, he's a friend and a colleague. Honestly, I can't think of a better candidate than Mandeep uh, to be the uh, uh, receive the Dracopolis professorship and to follow Dan. I think it's a perfect fit. Thank you. Carla, you said your dad uh, would have, with the professorship, would have said, "Oh, don't make a big fuss about me," and. Uh, and, and he did when uh, Andreas decided to create this professorship. He was, oh, Peter. It's a, and then uh, I would say when he got it, he was re-energized. And he came, comes to my office with a spreadsheet and how, how he wanted e every penny of, an, of income allocated. And, um, and one of the, I think, the single thing that he most wanted to support to make happen was uh, Mandeep's work, uh, and he obviously took great uh, pride and happiness, Mandeep, in uh, what you were doing, and he felt you were, I think, uh, picking up the, the, the baton, and, um, 
and uh, and and it was uh, uh, Andreas. I hope, I hope you. I, I think you knew this, but it. I think it. It uh, gave gave a lot of meaning to him in the last uh, home stretch of his uh, career. And uh, every so often, he would send me a note, say, "Peter, don't worry. I'm not going to retire." He want, He was going to work forever and uh, enjoy. Uh, watching what you youngsters did. So it didn't surprise me when a committee that I chose of uh, sagacious senior faculty from Wilmer and the Berman Institute unanimously recommended that the, the second uh, holder of this professorship would be Mandeep Singh. So Mandeep, I'm pleased to present you with this lovely medallion uh, recognizing your installation as the Andrea C. Dracopoulos Professor of Ophthalmology. Congratulations. Peter, thank you very much for this lovely plaque. Uh, Jim, you, you've, you've asked me never to thank you in public, but we're among, you know, it's just a couple of us here in this room, so I, I'll p thank you, Jim, for all the nice things you said, but also being a great supportive chief and helping me walk the road to get here. So uh, a few folks are gonna stand up. Uh, the lab, Minda and Ying and Bani and all the kids. Uh, in the clinical trials unit, Mary, Mary Fry, Sierra Thomas, uh, Jen, Ali, go on. You, got, you guys are in the room. Stand. Like, say, stand up. There you go. Uh, Kate, Kate, Kate and Lee. Lee and Kate and uh, Carolyn Applegate. And so, everyone, these are... <laughs> Thank you. Um, the, this is the crew on the ship. Uh, so everyone who supported our program, thank you so much. That's where really your funds and your gifts go. Uh, long hours in, the, in, in the, the engine room, moving this enterprise forward, but thank you everyone. Um, you know, when I interviewed here uh, with Peter McDonald, Neil Bressler, uh, Sheila West, Mort Goldberg, Jim Hander, Dan Finkelstein, I thought I'd died and gone to heaven because all these greats and I could pinch myself. But I immediately felt the pull and the magic of Wilma. I really felt that this was the place with people with different expertise, all mission-driven, mission-focused. And stem cells in regenerative medicine is, is like that. It's a complex task to make these cells and transplant them and Im immunosuppress the patient and handle the bioethics. And where else in the world could I get to meet all these people who would help us achieve this mission? It was clear to me that it was the only choice to join the Wilmer Eye Institute, and it's been life-changing that I did. So, Peter, thanks for creating this incredible environment where we could all be happy and do this work that we care about. Um, I also will say that here, it's, it's, it's really incredible that I also have a platform to speak to the FDA about the end goal. So, a big problem in our field is, what do we do with the last baton? We have a problem with measuring visual improvements. So think about many of our patients uh, with genetic eye disease cannot read the big E on the chart. How do you measure that this person is improving in their vision in a clinically meaningful way that the FDA will accept as a quantitative outcome measure? It's a real problem in genetic medicine. And so being able to have those discussions and work with my friend and colleague Greg uh, Newby on designing new ways of measuring vision. So we have a, a, you know, imagined a project where you could sample some eye fluid and measure some analytes to quantify when someone's retina is being regenerated and vision is being restored. This sort of a project that will change the landscape for everyone, I think is only possible in a place like the Wilmer Eye Institute. So this is the, the teary part. And uh, no, I'm not gonna talk about my husband, but actually about Jeff Doyle. Um, there would be no Jedi without Jeff's vision and propulsive energy and um, there, there would be none of this, really. So thank you, Jeff, for um, doing this with me, for giving me a chance to work with you to build this. It's been among the most fun things I do. All these endless meetings with you are just great. I mean, <laughs> I love them. Uh, my husband gets a little bit worried when you're on the phone with me so much, but I tell him it's all business and, you know, it's fine. Um, but I must also thank uh, my husband, Chu, for everything. Thank you for tolerating Jeff 
uh, and, and, and me and everything. And thank you, of course, to my family, many of whom are, are listening virtually. In, in my mind, Dan is sitting here with us, um, Carla, James, uh, Josh, Mr. and Mrs. Ratner. You, you know, um, the story's been told. It's my first week at Hopkins that I, I uh, you know, saw a friendly face in the, in the corridor, and I, I kind of grabbed him and said, could you teach me about everything you do? Like, how do I interpret these test results, and what are the protocols to treat these patients? And he said, no, no, none of that. Sit in this couch and let me, t you know, and he said, uh, Always tell the kids they'll be okay. Tell the boys they'll always be strong and tell the girls they'll always be beautiful and make sure the pe patients know that their place in the world is real. And just because they live with this disease doesn't mean it's the end of them. And I, I think of him every week in the clinic and his words powerful and they live on now a decade beyond. And I think Dan here would be, I think he would feel this. That, that was his vision with Jeff and I creating the genetic center and it's propelled our core that we think of human-centered care, even though the new age of stem cells and gene therapy is with us, but it's all about people and families. So thank you to the Finkelstein family for all of that. And, and so finally, it brings me to Andreas Dracopoulos. Andreas, where, uh, where do I begin? Where, where do we begin? But uh, thank you for spending time with us, um, for believing in, in this vision, in our vision, and for helping us in, in such a huge way to take the next step and to make this real. Um, I'm so aware of, of the honor and, and gravitas of holding this chair that bears your name and, and your family's name. It's an incredible honor for me and for the project that we have. So I, I think we'll do some good with it. Um, and. And I, I really look forward to the years ahead, uh, to this connection with you and hearing how you think we should build this. So thank you, Andreas, for everything. So um, I, I also want to say before I step off a quick thanks to the committee for uh, helping me to get here and also to all my mentors in the audience. I haven't managed to thank each of you in person, but many of you are here, uh, Dave, Don, uh, Peter, uh, Mort, Myrna, Thank you, everyone, for all of this. Thank you. We're, we're doing a lot better on time than I thought we, we were. So if you wanted to do a third uh, professorship. Um, it's uh, the, it's uh, uh, for, for us at Wilmer, a uh, great opportunity to spend time with Andreas and celebrate uh, the contributions and career of a special uh, fixture at Wilmer for five decades, Dan Finkelstein and the young people that will uh, continue his work. We're going to be uh, having a reception to follow over here. We're going to have uh, the uh, Mandeep and the Andreas C. Dracopoulos professor crowd here for the unveiling, and we're going to have Jeff and the Andreas C. Dracopoulos and, and uh, Daniel Finkelstein, MD, crowd over there for the unveiling of that plaque. And uh, Andreas, you'll just have to be both places. <laughs> and so uh, please uh, uh, jo join us for uh, the reception, if at all possible. Congratulate uh, the VIPs with us uh, today. and. Uh, Get your pictures taken with them if you can. And thank you all for uh, joining us for a special occasion. Thank you.